All right. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask a favor of all of you? Would you all do me a favor? And if, th if this feels like family, a round of applause, please. This feels like family, and it's uh, so nice to have you all here for this special night for John and Sherry. My name is Scott Tom. I'm a proud member of Emanuel Lutheran. I also work at iHeartRadio, 106.7 The Eagle, every afternoon, and I'm so proud to be here. It was such a big night for me. I took the day off. I took a vacation day. I, I'm going to make sure I am here. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Mr. and Mrs. John Lambert here at the wedding table. <laughs> it is time for our toast, and I would like to invite the uh, best man, Alex, to come up. Oh, there he is. Come on, Alex. You're a hard guy to miss. <laughs> You're a hard guy to miss. Okay. Now, listen, I know you've worked a microphone before, so real close. Over here, nice and close. Hey, do you want them standing? Okay, you, you want you want them standing up, Mom? Do you want them standing up? Do you want them to stand up, right here in the middle? We want to get the best memories of your big night. That's fine. Either one. Either one. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, my name is Alexander Farmer, and I've been John Lambert's friend for about 20 years now. I think we met in freshman year of Mrs. Talcott's biology class, freshman year of high school. And we also had Mr. Kowser together, and we had a lot of laughs in that class together. Um, I think we had some assignments, and that's how we came to be friends. And so that's, you know, been the history ever since. So. Uh, you know, ever since we'd met, uh, you've been inviting me over to watch Packer games together or go into Cleveland High School football games together um, or just any Christmas or New Year's party or just any old occasion that you'd have me over for, for a meal and a party. So, you know, it was always fun being able to go over to your house and, and celebrate with you guys. Um, and John is an excellent chef, as I hope Cherry has been able to find out. And um, they would just invite me over for dinner sometimes. And I don't think I ever ate more pork loin and asparagus than I ever have in my entire life than when I went over to your guys' house. But it was always done real well. And so I'm sure he cooks just as well for you guys up there. <laughs> Good. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a very... He's, He's a culinary genius, is what John Lambert is, you know. I can't cook worth anything, so whenever anybody can make something real well, I really respect that. So, um, you know, but we would go golfing at Saha Lee and the children's course together every Wednesday morning, and um, we'd go bowling at uh, Grand Central Bowl, um, and it didn't matter whether we played well or really poorly. Um, you know, we had a lot of fun out there together with you and your brother Paul and all those other, uh, all those other people that would come along and, um, you know, or I'd just come over and watch football and play with uh, Freckle, your cat, whenever, when you got him. Um, and uh, I remember, whoa. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's okay. Um, and I remember back in 2019 when I saw John off um, when he moved up to Bellingham. And I could tell that you were really excited and really ready to start a new chapter in your life. So it was nice to be able to see you off there at the final moment when I, you know, gave you a hug and you went on your way. And, you know, um, I still remember that day like it was yesterday. So I remember, you know, I see pictures of you two on Facebook and Instagram, um, going on walks together, um, spotting deer and other wildlife out and about. And then, you know, you're playing with your new cats, Muffin, Puffin, and Joy. So, you know, they seem like a lot of fun. So I know I'll tell a little embarrassing story about John, or maybe it's not so embarrassing, but, 
you know, you teared up a little when you got the presents from them this morning. So, you know, you started a little crying just a little bit, but it was really nice to, to see all the gifts that you got from, their, from your cats. So I know that you guys will have a long life of love and growing together. And so I'm excited to see that happen. And I'm excited to come up and see you guys in Bellingham um, in your new married life together. And Alex, Alex, that was great. Where is your glass to raise and say, cheers? Hold on, I'll get it for you. Where's his glass? Thank you so much. I'll just take the glass. Here we go. You got to stand by them and say, cheers, everybody. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Nicely done. All right. Alex, the best man. Great job. Thank you, my friend. All right. And now, the lovely maid of honor, Dana, is going to come up. I'm an introvert. So. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, when Terry asked me to be her maid of honor, I was very surprised and I'm humbled to be here to share this day with you. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, you have Melissa. Melissa was one of your bridesmaids. Uh, Tina, uh, you've known these girls since middle school and neither one of them will give up the dirt on you. So even, even Melissa's mother doesn't oh. know. <laughs> So, um, and we have Shay. Shay uh, is another one of Terry's bridesmaids, and they met after Terry moved to Washington, and they have formed a great friendship after meeting at a recreational program. And uh, Terry would invite her over to watch the Seahawks games in one of their rooms, yeah. only when the Seahawks were playing, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure spending time with you and the girls the last few days. Um, but Cherry was about eight years old when I met her. Uh, I was 14. I was a freshman at Glendora. And Cherry was one of the band sisters. And I was the, um, I was like, you know, the adopted older sister. And it wasn't just me. It was, yeah. it was a few of us, about a bunch of the pageantry girls. And um, Cherry would come around, and she was just so much fun. And I think it was great that she, you know, she had brothers. She didn't have sisters. Yeah, yeah. So we have, we have Becky here. She was like a mom to her. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I'm like a little sister. Um, and then when she got to high school, she joined pageantry, and uh, she followed in our footsteps. So, um, being the baby of the family, it's great to see. Um, it's great to be a big sister to you, Cherry. Mm -hmm. so, um, you've grown into such a beautiful woman, and it took John to notice that. Um, John, I remember the first time I met you. It was over a video chat. Um, yeah, we were up in Bellingham. Um, visiting the Kavitals, and we met over the computer. Yeah. So, and at that time, I, I knew that, you know, there was a connection between you guys and that you guys would be great together. So, um, so I asked you both a question tonight, and I said, <laughs> and you can see how much John loves Terry, because <laughs> John took a while to answer this question. He had to come back. And I asked them both, I said, what is the one thing that annoys you about the other person? Terry right away said, um, he goes to bed too early. Yes. And so I asked John, and John's like standing there. He's like, oh, I'm like, you really love her. <laughs> you really love her. And so he left. He came back really quick. He's like, she rushes me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, as he was being rushed by, he told me this. So. so guys, I would like to both look at each other, stare into each other's eyes, and dive into each other's soul. Right in front of you is the one person you chose to say I do to. And what this really means is you allowed yourself to be annoyed by this person for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Definitely. So from Tina, Melissa, Shay, myself, and everyone here, we wish you a loving and happy marriage uh, to John and Cherry. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. 
All right, hold those glasses up, and one more cheers for John and Cherry right here. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Maid of Honor Dana, that was fantastic. Most of you don't know she has a microphone hidden under her. Oh, did you? Did, she was going to record it on her phone while she was. Sorry, I threw you under the bus. Mom, Dad. Oh, is that the one? Mom, Dad. Dennis, Candy. She, she wants you to say a few words. A few words. Can, can, you, can you come up here for just a sec? Here. I've already talked too much. <laughs> okay, I will be glad to talk about Real them. Close. Real close. I will be glad to talk about both of them. <laughs> both of you. This is my daughter. I love her dearly. She is always there for me, and we like to do things together. And my oldest son couldn't be here. Unfortunately, I'm expecting my third grandchild. We are. And he has two girls. They were supposed to be, by the way, in the program, but they couldn't come because my daughter-in-law is expecting, and she's having complications due November 9th, so they weren't able to come. But my daughter explained Cherry easily all the time. She's a mini-me. <laughs> so anyway, he can't be here, but my other son's here for Glenn, and he came all the way from Chicago with his, with his girlfriend, Holly, so I'm glad that they got to come. So she's wonderful, she's very caring, and she, she really is a faithful friend, and she's always there for me. I never have to worry, and always there. So I love you. And let me talk about this guy. Oh. I won't say the one thing I always say about you, <laughs> but that wasn't, it's not bad. Um, <laughs> he's like a son to me, honestly. And I want to say that Kathy has raised him wonderfully. Both of her sons are really great. And this guy will do anything for you. And he's so good to Cherry. And I'm just so grateful that Cherry found him through Christian Mingle. I'm going to put a word in for that. Um, <laughs> and they are really compatible. And I wish them the best and the happiness in all the world. And I'm so glad, John, about one thing. You like cats. Yes. <laughs> okay, and Dennis doesn't like to talk, so. 